Imagine being able to ask your device which month it rains the most during the year when looking for a vacation destination. Or picture this, you're browsing through your social media feed and you wanna know which restaurant a food item is from or which event your friend is at. Or you wanna know what type of car or shopping item is in a picture. Today we'll dive into Llama and explore its potential to transform industries, simplify tasks, and enhance our daily lives. From customer service chatbots to creative writing assistants, let's discuss the real world applications of Llama and how it can be used to drive new innovation, improve efficiency, and unlock new possibilities. Before we dive into the real use cases for Llama, let's talk about the latest Llama 3.2 release, which came out in late September of 2024. Llama 3.2 introduced two image reasoning use case specific models, and these range from 11 billion to 90 billion in size. And B stands for billions of parameters that are actually used to build the models. Then we also had um, a 1 billion and 3 billion release that was specific to lightweight text only models that can fit on edge devices. And what that means is these models make it possible to build personalized on device applications that respect user privacy. So models that can go directly on your phone. And to make it even easier for developers to work with the Llama models, we had something called the Llama stack introduced. And the Llama stack is a simplified architecture approach which allows you to work with agents, right? To build out these different Llama models and integrate in applications. So what does this mean in real life situations? Let's dive into a few of the most common use cases of Llama. And we'll start with image understanding. So as part of image understanding, we can now do things like document understanding. So if I have a chart in a document, that's a revenue target chart. I can ask very specific questions like why is the revenue increasing? what is my maximum revenue? And the model will be able to tell me just by looking at that chart. I can also use it for use cases like visual question answering. So if I'm looking at a soccer ball or a team playing a sport, I can ask a question like what ball is that or what sport is taking place and I'll get my answer of soccer. And then finally, there's use cases like image capturing, so I can look at a very specific image and ask the model to actually generate a caption for me on the spot. So brand new capabilities that are all available from that Llama 3.2 release. Next, we have language generation and summarization. This is one of the most popular Llama use cases, even from the early days of Llama. What does that mean? So with language generation, we can genera generate things like scripts, right? Large bodies of text or something as short as a bio or a profile, right? Let's write a quick LinkedIn bio using Llama. For summarization, we can do things like summarize meeting notes, taking something that might have been an hour or multiple hours and summarizing that into a simple four bullet list. And what does that mean related to the latest 3.2 release? Well, with the latest release, we can do this on our phone. So if we want to send a text message to a group of people about an event, or even rephrase a message, or summarize daily actions in a calendar, we can now do that with a Llama model. Our next popular use case is conversational AI. So this is building off of that language generation and summarization for some examples and using it to create a chat bot. 
or a virtual assistant. And you may be able to generate or summarize information as part of that chat, but also this pulls in question and answer. So being able to self-serve and actually ask specific questions of the chatbot or virtual assistant and get back very specific responses. So let's think about an online or a store experience when we are shopping. So we might wanna ask specific questions about a product to know product details, and we don't wanna spend time waiting on an agent. We can do that through that conversational AI or llama powered chatbot. I can ask questions about the return policy, um, and maybe even comparing two items that I couldn't do without the use of Llama. And we could also do this on our phone. And we think about maybe summarizing text messages, asking questions about our day, all through the power of a single virtual assistant. Finally, we have language translation. This could be using everyday languages from around the globe and translating those languages from one to another, conversating with a conversational AI llama chatbot in those languages, or it could be code languages. So if we wanted to take a Python snippet of code and convert it to Java, we could do that using llama or even generating this code in Python from scratch or telling the model to write us a Python loop. Now, this is something that's really been expanded over time. The original Llama models were mostly just English and some of the later releases, right, have included new languages, but we should note that this doesn't explicitly cover all languages in the world. So it'll be interesting to see how this feature continues to grow and roll out with future releases. You may be wondering how you can take advantage of these impressive new models. Well, some of these models are actually available today. You maybe have already used them. They're available on social media sites, and you can also use these models for your own through Hugging Face and through generative AI platforms. After the past two years of exciting innovation, Llama 3's releases have continued to be even more impressive and have released even faster with more capabilities than any of the prior releases. What do you think Llama will bring next? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments.